YCS Sydney is in the books, boys, and it is time for an updated best version of Pendulum deck profile. You guys seen all my lists already. I put up my budget list, my Blackwing list. Actually, I actually don't even think I put up my blocking list yet. Yeah, that coming soon. My metal is coming soon. You guys seen the heroes. You guys seen the Thunder Dragons. You guys seen the Fawfuls. You guys seen the DDs, the PKs, etc., etc. But what is the best list available right now for Pendulums? That is what this video is for. My updated YCS Sydney, post YCS Sydney deck profile to take on the meta that will destroy Alter Guys, Thunder Dragons. A lot of stuff happened then, man. Thunder Dragons reigning supreme. Alter Guys reigning supreme. Strikers also up there. So hey, without further ado, I don't want to put too much fluff into it. This channel is specifically for making Pendulums the greatest deck in the world. So I have to post it as soon as possible. So let's get right into it, alright? Do make sure, guys, this is my new Triv Gaming mat. It is my very first mat. So happy we got out. Partners on Imperium Duelist to get it out for you guys. Link will be in the description. And I will be releasing a Triv Shop very, very soon, guys. So if you want to help support your boy, do check out the Heavy Metal Force Electrum. Stick to the game plan, mat. Available now on Imperium Duelist's site. It will be in the description below. Uh, sh uh, shipping a little extra for everyone, everyone else but North America. But it's available everywhere. So without further ado, guys. Let's get right into it. Also, make sure to check out my sponsor, Game Nation. Make sure to subscribe. We're almost at 14,000 subscribers. Hit that notification bell, all right? And let's get right into it. This bell is uh, 55 cards. Why? Because I learned something from Jesse. Jesse Cotton played 49 cards for his build, and he, he didn't make it 50 just to make it 50, like a clean number. So 55 is the perfect number right now. There's just a perfect amount, and it's more pendulum-centric. I'm going to be showcasing a little different version of my profiles than I normally do. More so just to give the channel a little more spice than normal. So these are the Magician Count. Why do we play these Magicians? And I will find out everything for you guys. You guys can see the whole deck as a whole. And maybe I'll start posting. Let me know in the description below, guys. If you want to see me start posting the uh, the deck profiles on Dueling Book in the description so you guys can download it. Uh, but this is the Magician list right now. We play three Wisdom Eyes and three Harmonizings. Why? Because they're good cards. Before Harmonize, usually... Believe me, harmonizing at 2 might even be the right number at 40, and I'm not even joking when I say that. Just because with all the pen calls you run and harmonizing and election sending, you almost always have access to it and doubles suck. So, sometimes you should have it. But you want to ensure no matter what, 55 cards, especially playing... Oh, in generic, you have to run 2 harmonizing. It's not a doubt. Like, like for sure. But in PK pens, because you always have the free up uh, a slot to summon the harmonizing, because you're going for the traps in your uh, in your set, cards, set, set zones anyways, it's good to max as much as you can. So these are the time additions we play. And what we learned from YCS Sydney is that Dragon Pit is going to be super, super, super clutch this format. Why? Alter Geist reign supreme. You guys seen what Rivalry of Warlords done in that top... Uh, the guy who won, Omar Gezun or whatever. That guy literally waxed. He waxed Bowden and Jesse using the exact same list simply by Rivalry of Warlords. If Rivalry was not on field, there would have been no problem. But do you have any idea how many outs, you, how many ways you have a Dragon Pit? You have your three Wisdom Mines, you have your six Pendulum Calls, and you have your one Dragon Pit. That's ten ways to go into Dragon Pit to take care of the rivalry. Like, Anti Spell's not an issue anymore. That's why the Dragon Pit was gone. But this gets rid of all Floodgates, and it's absolutely necessary post YCS Sydney to play this. Because from what we learned is that Floodgates will reign supreme. Same with Pearl Poison. You have another ten ways to go into this because of Wisdom, Pit, etc., etc. Even Electrum sending any of these. If you can somehow make the Electrum or the make uh, the rivalry after you Electrum. So always you got to make sure you have access to Poison and Pit. And if Floodgates didn't exist, I would not play these cards whatsoever. I'd actually play Triple Oak Dragon and Zero Purple Poison. Because what boards are you clearing? A Sky Circuit Kagari? There's no specific board that poison you need help or Poison's help to clear. So this is the correct count. And you only need one of each of these. You don't need to play doubles because you always just get them. And after you get your first copy, you don't need them whatsoever. These are the only broken ones. Wisdom gets anything you need out of these. It's like a Magician Toolbox. Whether you want a plus one, whether you want to take care of a back row, whether you want to add the plus 1200 and destroy a card, and that's all you need. You don't even need Black Fangs utility. This is all the utility you need. Next, the turbo cards. I will get this a little more organized for you guys. So you can see as a whole, as I'm doing the deck profile, to see what cards uh, I'm playing, etc., etc. So you have more of an idea of the whole deck as a whole. Now the turbo cards, you still need to play the same 12 turbo cards. These are the only 12 turbo cards that are as generic as possible. That you don't need to go first or second to activate. You can do both. Like, there's a lot of turbo cards you can only use going second. A lot of turbo cards you can use only going first, etc., etc. You want to have as much as possible. You still play lots and lots of spells. And as you guys saw, 
Jesse Khan put in so much work with Mare Mare. Like, I'm telling you guys right now, Yazi Mare Mare is a busted combo. You can't not play Yazi Mare Mare if your deck has access to it. That's also why we play Triple Harmonizing. Because Harmonizing Gazer goes into it. Gazer's so good, man. I might even play two of these bad boys, bro. I might even up, uh, play Time Breaker just because you need more level threes. Harmonizing Time Breaker. Harmonizing Time Gazer. It's a free har uh, It's a free Dragster going first. A free Yazi going second. And to top all that off... There's lots of utility with all these turbo cards as well to ensure that you utilize all those. Abductor itself gets what I mean. Any situation, you play so many spells with Yazi Mirmir. The uh, the way it works together and the synergy is absolutely perfect. Even when you side, you side a bunch of hand traps, especially level three hand traps. Curtain Razor effect, normal summon Ghost Ogre Yazi. Like even in situations where you draw doubles or something, like it works out fantastically with the whole synergy of the deck. Next, I used to play two Dark Worm. Because a lot of the times you don't need it because you want to, you know, other situations you wouldn't need to. Like after you, because you have nine ways to send Dark Worm, so drawing a Dark Worm would be a, a Garnet. It would literally be a Pendulum Garnet. It's like you're drawing Time Gazer. It's like you're drawing a level four Gate Zero, actually. So, but if you drew a Dark Worm, because you have nine ways to send Dark Worm to the grave, so you just want it in your deck. But what I also realized is even drawing is not so bad. Even if you did draw in conjunction with a Dragon Shrine, could you just send the Distrudo and you could Pendulum call as normal summon, etc, etc. So having access to 11 different discard outlets and Dark Worm is obviously just too good not to play. Even though you have other cards you want to discard. But 3 is necessary. Uh, I try and save, like every, like I try and take a Wisdom as harmonizing one Dark Worm, like one of here. To really perfect the, the ratios. But right now this is the perfect ratio. Knowing what you're going to be facing. Uh, there's going to be less, because Sky Striker is going to be seeing more Altar Guys, more Thunder Dragon. And this is just overall the best. Ratios of everything. Two Jackals still. I wasn't even putting Bashilis, but we put Desires back in the deck. So you do need double Jackal. And it's uh, just a great card. We took out the Zephyr. So Jackal is simply, if you don't have access to Jackal, or if you have enough to if you have enough to pen summon, Jackal is always what you send off Electrum to get enough free Monster Negate on board. And Monster Negates is what's going to win you the duel, not Spell Trap Negates. Because your opponent can't win without Monster Negates. You just need enough Spell Trap Negates to negate evenly matched. That's all. Uh, next, we play the Cloak. The boots, the PKs are going to play one of each. I was playing double boots for a while, but one of each is all that's necessary. And then the Strudo and the Mirmir. These are the non-Pendulum monsters we do play. And they're absolutely necessary. The Strudo Mirmir. Yeah, you're going to draw a Mirmir some of the time. But that's all good. What Mirmir does being in your deck is too good not to play. You absolutely must play it. It's not even a debate in my mind. The Strudo Mirmir is absolutely necessary. It's literally just too strong. And some people say, oh, 55 cards, 55 cards. Dude, you're not going to gonna draw this last by playing 55. That's the only reason to play 55. All these cards do the exact same. Point right here and tell me one card that's by, like, that's way better than all the other rest, the, all the other cards. There isn't. They all do the exact same thing. Like, the power level is the exact same. It's not like it's not like one card is absolutely more busted than the rest. It's not like you're playing Zodiacs and you need to draw an access to, an, a way to go into Rat. Or it's not like you're playing like Spirals and you need a way to go into your special summon Spiral cards. You know what I mean? Like... They all relatively have the exact same power. The only card that's a little better than the rest is Foolish Burial and Shrine. Because you get a plus off gate zero. But even in itself, drawing two of them suck in 40. So it's like, all of them have the exact same power essentially. So whether you play 40 or whether you play 60 is the exact same shit. Like it doesn't affect anything. They all have the exact same power. In fact, playing 60 or more, I would rather play 60. But 55 is just a perfect ratio in terms of the best cards to possibly play. What are you going to do? Take a Wisdom Eyes? What are you going to do? Take a Turbo card? Take no curtain razor is st stupid. It's like curtain razor is arguably one of the best cards in your deck. So why would you take out razor? Why would you take out like taking out razor is the equivalent of taking out Cerberus? Why would you do that? Why would you take out Doctor? Why would you take out Chronograph? They all do the exact same thing. They just get on the field to make Electro. That's literally the only reason they're there. Like you're never gonna actually use Chronograph's effect in hand. Like it's just there to summon itself on field. Cerberus bricks itself. Yeah, it gets you a free Jekyll as well, and you get to use its effect. But it bricks. They all have the same power level. Doctor, what if you don't draw a spell? They all have the same power level. The, you're, what are you going to do? Take out Jackals? No. What are you going to take out Dark Worms? No. Are you going to take out Magicians? No. Like, this just... So, they all have the exact same power level, so playing more cards does not matter. Whatsoever. Next, we got our Pen Calls. Absolutely necessary. The only uh, argument anyone can ever have on not playing 6 Pendulum Calls or 5... If you're playing 40, you play 5 Pendulum Calls. If you're playing 60 or anything more than 40, play 6. Pen Calls is the best card in the deck by a landslide, actually. So playing six is fine. If you play forty, you play. Th you're not gonna play six pen calls in forty. You know, so most people play three and forty. But in fifty-five, six is absolutely perfect number. You're never gonna see three pen calls. You're gonna see maximum two of them. And you want to see this card so badly because 
What Pankal does, it, this card's a useless card in your hand, like a double of Desires, a double of Foolish, a double of a Field Spot, a double of a Pankal, a double of a Non-Pendulum, a double of something you do not need whatsoever, a Gate Zero, a Gazer, whatever. And it gets you two monsters, so you basically discard a useless card, plus one already, because the useless card you're not going to use. You're like, discard like a card that you're not going to use regardless. You're going to get one Harmonizing and an Oak Dragon. Harmonizing will plus one and Oak Dragon will plus one. You just plus three in total in that way. Even though you get, I know you're getting rid of the same amount of cards, but you're going to get rid of a card that you're not using. Or even if you use, like, even if your head's busting, you get rid of a card you use, big deal. Each of these are going to plus one for you. And it protects your scales. And it is the best follow up ever. Like, and some people could also say, oh, but I don't want it to conflict with Wisdom Eye. Why do you play Wisdom Eye? Drawing Wisdom, you need magicians in your scales. There's no other option here. After a. Uh, Abduct abductor or magicians nothing else can be in your scale with no matter what if you have not anything else in your scales then you're just gonna have a horrible follow-up because while they're in the scales it's still plus four you'll give you great follow-up so if you don't draw a pen call you can't re re resort to not having nothing else you need to draw one of these nine no matter what these are the best cards in the deck these nine it ensures the flow and consistency and just the beautifulness of the deck to ensure that you're going to have the same boards every turn ensuring you're going to pen summon next turn pen summoning every turn is how you win the grind game is how you win the four negates is nice and all but they're not going to scoop the four negates unless they're a puss uh but they said they're going to have you're going to have nine pendulums going back and forth old dragon adding 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 pit popping 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 harmonizing special 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 and that's how you win the duel the other card sets up your first turn the the magicians are what wins you in the and after turn one so you need to see Wisdom, Pen Color, Alliance, no matter what. Even in 40, I play Triple Wisdom and, and 5 Pen Calls. So you need to play those. If you draw Wisdom and Pen Call, who gives a shit? It's like drawing... Who cares? It's literally like drawing a 2 Razors or 2 Sir or 2 Chronos. It's like drawing 2 Chronograph or 2 Doctor. Or it's big deal. Pendulum Monsters, who cares? Like, and whenever you're playing, uh, Pen Call gets Ash. You want to have access to Wisdom regardless. It's too good not to play. And uh, Wisdom at 3 is necessary, 100%. And if you can't fit in a lot of these cards in 40, just play 45. Jesse Cotton finished. Jesse Cotton's deck was the best deck at YCS Sydney. Him and Bowden played the exact same list. And it, but, uh, Jesse finished 14 0. In the final match, in the very fi finals, after finishing going 14 0, he bricked like crazy every single game, drawing like Brilliant Fusion and the Gem Knight Garnet, like the Amber, every single game, drawing Miriam and all this stuff. He played 49 cards. And he won 14-0, and, and by an anomaly, he didn't win uh, the finals, where only because he did brick. He could have gone 15-0. and it, By an anomaly, he didn't. His, his friend, who played the exact same list, Bowden, also made it to his third place. Third place. They played the exact same list, second and third. What, what were their lists? 49 and 50 cards. 49 and 50 cards. Just There's no specific rule to play 40. Like They all do the exact same thing anyways. It just gives you more of a toolbox. In fact, I see 60 being the new wave soon. When more and more great Yu-Gi-Oh cards come out and get released, there just won't be enough space to put all these cards in. It's a toolbox. Everything's in your deck. It doesn't matter what you draw. The power level of all these cards are the exact same. Next, more turbo cards. So, Foolish, 3 Shrine, 3 Ravine, 2 Terraforming. These are all the turbo cards you see here. These are all the magicians you see up there. You need to see as much as you possibly can. And I want to put it out like this for you guys. You guys just see... That the whole deck as a whole and the power level really is the exact same with all these cards. Next, three desires, three allure. Some argue desires could be the you only want to see desires, whatever. Desires isn't even that great in this deck. It's only there for going second. If I know for sure I'm going first every duel, I'm taking desires out. There's too much of a chance to get rid of your traps uh, with these. These are the last two cards in the deck, by the two fog blades. There's too much of a chance to get rid of these. Your distruder going second, even your memory going second. Like, it's not that b good. You, you, you can get rid of your Gate Zero. You get rid of two Jackals sometimes. You, what if you get rid of all your low scales of Wisdom Eye? What if you get rid of Gazer, no Chrono Grab, etc., etc.? Get rid of all your Ravines or Terraforming. Like, get rid of all your Dark Ones. There's two I have a chance of getting rid of good stuff. So, Desire itself isn't even that good. Literally, the power level of all these cards are the exact same. This is the main deck. 55 cards of perfection. It's absolutely perfect. It really is. Like, I absolutely love it. I've been testing with this uh, both in person and online. And it just works absolutely fantastically. I absolutely love it, man. It's it just such a great list. And it's so, so, so fun to play. Especially after you see this extra deck. Like, going going first, you put up five negates. Going second, you just... Uh, the Zephyr I, I took out, but I will probably put back in. It just... Uh, I like not playing the Zephyr because... There's more... I don't know. There's more chance of... There's like a... With the Zephyr, you could draw both of them, which could break your hand. And I find four negates is auto-win anyways. 
My most typical first turn board is going to be Double Fog Blade, Dragster. Double Fog Blade, Dragster, Jackal it is my most typical board going first. Or, sorry, um, a rank four. Yeah, a rank four, Dragster, Jackal, and Double Fog Blade. That's my most normal turn. Like, I always go Dragster no matter what. So, most of the time, it's Dragster. Dragster, Dweller, Jackal, Double Fog Blade, or Dragster. What I like to do is Dragster. Uh, sometimes you don't know what you're playing, right? So, my most typical first turn board with this deck. Like, I'm talking every single turn, like 99% success rate. And you get hand trapped, you usually go double fog blade, dragster. So, through no hand traps, your most typical board is gonna be this. Let me just set this up. I'll show you guys actually, like, in a second. The most typical first turn board, assuming there's no hand traps, and I will show you the board where there is hand traps, and it does happen. You're gonna get hand trapped once or twice, uh, and that's okay, because. The deck is absolutely nuts where it plays your hand traps so, so, so well. That's why I prefer this over FTKs, but I do have an FTK I'll be showing you guys very soon. With Pendulums, it's absolutely broken. Uh, this is your typical first turn board. Always, always with Magicians in the scales. Always. I always want Open Harmonizing to set up because you don't know if you're playing a monster deck or a back row type of deck. So this is your typical board with a very set up extra deck all the time. So you can have a set up extra deck all the time. Uh, like a lot of cards, man. We're talking a lot. You're always going to have harmonizing some random turbo card, random stuff in there. You always do. Always. Typically cards in end as well. But this is what you're going to see most of the time. Now, let, let's look at this, for example. Let's say your opponent's playing Altergeist. They're not resolving. They're not attacking any of your stuff. They're not uh, searching into the Marionetter. They're not doing anything with Faker because all this stuff's negating everything. This is negating the monsters. This is negating any desires to do. Then when they, when they set three pass... Tornado pop one. Then on your turn, Tornado pop another. Dragster uh, negate the last one. And they can't use monster effects. Like this type of, this board negates monsters. And it's, like this will do two pops in total. So this will take care of, uh, and two, like this is never ending negates. These take care of spell traps. These take care of monsters. And it's an auto win. Together, you just cannot lose with them. Uh, going second, it's a little bit different. Uh, sorry, game two and game three is a little bit different. Because uh, game two and game three, I side the, when I know I'm going first, game two and game three, I side the Zephyrus in. Because you, you're scared to evenly match. So typically in game two and game three, it's double fog blade, Zephra Trap, and Dragster Jackal. But game one, this is all uh, it's all that's required. It happens every single time. Then your follow-up's insane. Because even though they somehow get rid of Rusty, banish the fog blade, putting uh this probably get rid of stuff like this. So give yourself a zone, uh off add back harmonizing. The card you draw, discard a pit, take care of an another back row. Like that's why like, all this stuff takes care of back row decks. That's why you don't I don't side much for back row decks because you always have these uh, that are just every single turn anyways. And Phoenix. And Rusty will pop a card when you summon something. And you simply just pen summon like anything, whatever. And then like uh, Rusty uh, Poison comes out. Then uh, go to Dark Rebellion. Rusty Effect pops another card. And you just pop so much stuff and you simply OTK absolutely easily. It's absolutely insane. And I do highly recommend you. This is the best version for sure after lots and lots of testing. But now I'll show you guys the extra deck. And how all this is even possible. Like, this deck's just so good, man. Like, I'm not boost boasting about this whatsoever. This deck's absolutely nuts. Next, so, Electrum. Obviously, best card in there. And then, Underclock and Rusty. Uh, I'm going to... Underclock, I thought it was better than uh, than uh, Space Insulator. But Insulator's better because sometimes uh, going second, you're not even going to make Electrum sometimes. You just go straight Yazi. Going second is literally Yazi Turbo. And I'm going to show you guys why uh, right now. So, first, I'll show you guys the going first card. So, like, this is you do first going first. Then you want to have a rank four dweller tornado. Uh, what tornado does, isn't good against dweller is good against pretty much, and against everything else you just don't need to make, go into anything. Uh, you always end up like I said, one rank four and a dragster. This is your first turn board, one rank four and a dragster, and you uh, typically let him was on the jackal instead of the zephra, so and a jackal on top with the double fog blade from rusty. So this is your first turn boards. Uh, you always go through these in your first turn, leaving an incredible amount of cards for going second. After you go first, you want to have one more thing for going first. You, you, now your follow-up to OTK them the next turn. You have Dark Rebellion as well because Dark Rebellion, uh, Rusty will trigger when you summon Dark Rebellion, popping a card, and then attacking for like 4,000, 5,000. So these are the cards you need going first, and this just to OTK. Let me make, set this up for you guys. These are the going first ones. You don't need Vortex, Dragster, any, or sorry, Vortex, and really need any of that because uh, this is what you need anyways in Zephra. The Zephra, because you always side the Zephra. So the Zephyr takes care of another negate as well. So this is all you need for going first. The rest is all utility. So being able to play this version uh, gives you so much more free space in your extra deck because people are going to be playing stuff like Vort two cards of Vortex, uh, Norito, Void Ogre, Omega, all that, all those garbage cards, more rank for Karen Gorgon. All these garbage cards takes up like five slots. But 
and more like this Metaltron, like all this shit, like six, like Land from Arcus, whatever. Even though this is equals like a free arrow, it's like a free arrow every single turn. Uh, so it's like both Metaltron and Land from Arcus plus two free negates plus free arrows plus pops a card. Like this card's absolutely nuts. I know what Aggro must play Rusty is not even an option. Uh, and then look how much space you have now for utility. You play the, all the nightmares that are good. And then gears for even more utility to even get rid of stuff more. Both Boral's cards, which some people can't even put in here. And then the Yazzie. So it's like, look how much access... And then the Linkery before Yazzie. Look how much access you have to popping stuff. With Rusty always popping one card as well. So the extra deck pops everything. Like, this is what you want in extra deck. Pop. Pop back row. Pop monster. Uh, draw of these. Shuffle anything. Uh, send anything. Take, these two really destroy Thunder Dragons. Uh, against Thunder Dragons, you just go Boral Load, you win. Boral Sword OTK. Dark Rebellion OTK, Pop Rusty, Yazi Pop, Mare Mare, go into these, go into this. Like, it's absolutely nuts. The synergy, how I built it from top to bottom is absolutely remarkable. So this is the best updated extra deck by Landslide. And I'm putting it up for you guys so you can pause it if you want to see the exact list. Uh, so you guys can copy it for yourselves. And again, as I said before, this entire list is on my sponsor's website, GameNation.com, and I, or was sorry, YGOMarket.com. And I will be uploading on my trip merch very, trip shop very, very soon. The exact list. And guys, everyone, uh, thank you so much for everyone who reached out for the budget deck. Uh, you guys, uh, there's so much interest for it. And I'm, uh, so I'm, we're just sorting out the cards right now. There's lots and lots and lots of cards in there. But we have like 20 requests. So we're just sorting the cards, buying the cards for you guys. So give us a few days and uh, we'll get it for all you guys, by the way. So this is the list. Uh, pause if you would like to get all the cards. And we'll go right into the side deck now. Uh, before we go, actually, no, we'll save this part for the very end, but now the side deck is, uh, three gamma and one driver. Uh, this is by far the best hand trap in the game right now. Uh, you don't even need to play Omega because you just save it going second, uh, and it, you're going to use it every single turn. It's just absolutely nuts. Like, it really, really is. It is. Sometimes you just save it and go gamma driver. Instead of going to Omega right away, you use it for link material, uh, to, like, Cerberus or Phoenix to get rid of another card. Uh, it's absolutely nuts. It's the best hand trap by land side. Next, we don't really want to see doubles of cards because uh, it's, it's Pendulum, so you want to save all the resources possible. But if you were to use any doubles, you save these because they're level 3s. Uh, Baylor should be in permanence. These are the nine, the 10 hand traps we play, or 9 plus Driver. Uh, should be in permanence, but I don't uh, have in permanence at the moment because uh, I'm banned and uh, I can't really use it. But uh, these are the best hand traps right now. These are, This is in permanence, but whatever, Baylor is close enough. But permanence is way, way better. These take care of uh, Call by the Grave. You can't Call by the Grave these. And it's just good. These are the best level threes. And it's just level threes help your deck so much more because you can pen some of them if they're not absolutely game changing. Like if you just have to add, like let's say you're playing Trick Stars uh, and you just save your Ash for the reincarnation. If they don't have it in your turn, you pen some in Yazi, you win. Or Ogre, Ash, if you don't have, really need to use them, sometimes I save them. Like if you don't plus that much by, if you don't like stop their turn by using these, I sometimes just save it to be honest because uh, you don't really need them. But it's really just for FTK decks. But in total, nine cards, or well, nine hand traps with the driver. That's all you really need. Rongo does suck. You just draw one of those nine, you win. And uh, Rongo sucks. You don't need to prepare too much for it. Next, uh, for backer decks, you got three re red reboot. Uh, red reboot itself is actually bust. Obviously, you just win. Uh, outright win. You saw how good the extra deck and the main deck is to take care of back row. So three reboots, all you need. Uh, because the, this in itself is a complete auto, 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 auto win. Uh, drawing it. So you don't need twisters. You don't need hate true nades. You don't need, you don't need dino wrestler or whatever. Because your deck takes care of the rest, Dragon Pit, etc., etc. You have so many ways to go into it, Poison. And lastly, going for, uh, you want to side these going first because evenly match is a card. Uh, Sky Circus can play evenly match, and uh, they have like like Afterburners, Widows, Engages to, to stop your one spell trap negate. Because uh, the only spell trap negate right now in the deck is Dragster. So you go Dragster every single turn, no matter what. But in, going, in game two and game three, when you're going first, it's always going to be Dragster and the Zephyr Divine Strike. So you want to always be prepared for that because game one, no one means that with those cards. So you just want to be prepared for it, and then you don't uh, going uh, the trap. The fog blades are good going a second. I'm not joking. They're actually good to have in the deck because after you clear their board, you simply just go into the two rust, the uh, two fog blades after you clear their board going second. But these have no utility going second, and they always break break you going second. But going first, other cards are fine. Uh, so we don't mean these, but we do side it going for uh, going first because. Having access to these two, double fog blade jackal, uh, is just too, 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 too powerful. And sometimes I added tornado on top, so it's like a complete auto win. Uh, that is a side, that is the extra, guys. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do check out this map 
in the description below. Also, if you guys do want more budget pencil decks, let me know on Facebook. I will mess with my sponsor. We literally had 20, 20 responses for it. So let me know down below, guys. Comment below if you guys think of this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification button before you guys get going. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.